Okay. And therefore, it's like two angular momentum algebras, which is like SO3 direct product with SO3. And that's known to be SO4. So the symmetric group of this guy is SO4. And it's that symmetry, this extra symmetry, which in quantum mechanics reflects itself as accidental symmetry. This L degeneracy. The L is gone in the, in the energy levels. Doesn't always happen. It'll happen if you have other super integrable cases. The 3D harmonic oscillator is an example. You got SU3. So you can ask, oh, what's the generators of those fellows? Where does that uh, SU3 come from? Well, let's look at the 3D oscillator and you'll see. So h is equal to summation i equal to 1 to 3, uh, half qi squared plus pi squared. Yeah. And then with this Hamiltonian, is a very simple one, the isotropic Hamiltonian, I urge you to verify that the following quantities are all constants of the motion. All these quantities, pij, equal to qi qj plus pi qj. This tensor has nine components, but it's a symmetric tensor. The diagonal ones, the trace of the diagonal elements, the trace is in fact the total energy, Hamiltonian. But each of them is a constant of motion. So three diagonal ones, three off diagonal ones. And then these constants of the motion, lambda i j is qi pj minus qj pi, which you recognize is just the components of the angular moment. I urge you now, as a homework exercise to find the algebra of commutators in these guys. And that will turn out to be the algebra of SU3, which therefore is the symmetric group, dynamical symmetric group of the system. Now they're not all independent of each other. It's clear that you can only have three of them in involution with each other, and you can only have how many of them which are absolutely independent of each other? Three degrees of freedom. Three degrees of freedom. So you have a six dimensional phase space, five of them. The others would be functions. But it's a nice symmetric system. And that, by the way, generalizes to n dimensional oscillator, where SUN is a symmetric group. And that's used in nuclear physics. The fact that the isotropic ND oscillator as a symmetric group SUN is used in nuclear physics to classify levels and so on. Wigner used this in the case of SU4 long, long ago. But today it's known that that's the dynamical symmetry group. So we use for that. So the distinction between constants of the motion on the one hand, things which are in evolution with each other, the generators of the symmetry group, the number of independent constants of the motion, when motion occurs on a torus, the most general motion on a torus is quasi-periodic motion. In general, that's an ergodic motion on this torus. In other words, every part is visited. But the moment you have special cases or resonances, that's broken immediately. And dynamical systems tend very often to lock themselves into these resonances. It's the opposite of what you would expect. Very often, uh, they tend to lock themselves into 1 is to 2, 2 is to 3 resonances, and so on. What's the most famous example of this locking? Two different motions which have commensurate frequency ratio which you see every every day or if you look in the night sky you'll see. Yeah the moon presents one phase to us, right? So it's revolution period and rotation period are locked almost in a one to one. Much more common is the three is to two resonance, which happens for the moons of Jupiter or whatever. Very common. In the Kirkwood gap you see this dynamical locking in or synchronization. But there's also the tendency to disturb things. And the robustness of uh, Hamiltonian mechanics, um, the robustness of uh, periodic motion, depends on what the frequency ratios are, how close to rational approximations these are. But generically, it's quasi-periodic. And next time, I start with that point and say, what's next? What comes after quasi-periodic motion? Because all that is integral. What happens if the system becomes non-integral? How complicated does it get? So that will be our next. Is it time for me to stop? So there's one announcement. Uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, tomorrow's fight.